So this is a description, this is a site plan that shows the scope of the work. The primary addition that we're doing is the kitchen expansion. We're doubling it in size and uh, the cafeteria is going to be refinished. The green, slide, the green areas on the slide is really kind of showing that. Um, it says parking lot, but that's it, these have been transposed. The, uh, the blue area is parking lot that's going to be replaced. The green area is the uh, playground that's going to be replaced. Um, anyway, so now moving on to building exterior. Um, I think item number one is probably the item that I think most everybody's the most happy about for the school is the roofing replacement. The original building had basically <laughs> a flat roof and uh, there's a lot of difficulty replacing that roof just based on the way it was built. Um, what we're doing is we're going to be uh, replacing actually the roof drains and then we're going to be putting tapered insulation in to where you will get water that will drain directly to the drain. And uh, the other thing that's a, it's a code requirement is you have to have overflow drains associated with that. And that becomes real problematic because previously your overflow drain was basically just kind of would build up and go over to the sides. Um, that doesn't work when you taper it like we're going to do. And so we're going to be adding overflow drains as well. And uh, we've had to find ways to route those through the building. And uh, they're going to actually drop down through the ceiling. And they'll be somewhat exposed. And so... They might be an eyesore to some people, but uh, Principal Carter, if you'll just remind them, the reason those are there is because we had to fix the roof and uh, and also provide an overflow drain capability as well. So um, I, I know everybody's most excited about there. We've been out there several times when it has been leaking, and I felt bad for everybody in the building when it was leaking. So uh, anyway, that's what we're doing. Uh, moving on to other exterior repair, we're doing some brickwork repair. Um, this is a, a 1949 building. Uh, it's a 12 inch solid masonry wall. It's a masonry, eight inch back uh, masonry wall and then a four inch uh, brick in the front. And uh, it's an old style, but what's really unique on this building is that, um, I, I don't know how much, if y'all are familiar, but in today's construction, you put control joints every 25 feet and there are basically none on this building. Uh, it was a different construction at that time. And uh, frankly, I've been interested in this building because of that. Um, I took some pictures and I've sent it to the Brick Institute in Washington, D.C. We've had some dialogue about how you repair uh, these walls. Um, there are a few cracks, but given how big it is and uh, uh, the way the building had, has expanded over time, um, it's, it's remarkable how few cracks there are. But the cracks that are there, we're going to repair. Um, so anyway, that's brick repair. Uh, window replacement. Um, there are a lot of windows that have been replaced over time. It's the oldest windows are the ones that we're replacing. Primarily the biggest ones are the uh, windows on the uh, auditorium side. But just scattered around, there's some old windows. And uh, anyway, we are going to be replacing those. And then the last bullet item here is talking about the ground level window screens. The district has standards for window screens on the first floor, and uh, there are some there now. Uh, we will be replacing those to meet the current standard and uh, also adding those where they are currently missing. So um, that is the exterior slide. I'm going to move on. Um, the, uh, this is a slide talking about the main entrance. Uh, again, it shows the canopy a little bit better and also shows the secure vestibule. Um, you have a vestibule now, it's going to be expanded, and also there's a side door that goes from there into a reception area where they can monitor entry into the building uh, from there. So uh, anyway, that's going to be compliant with the district standards. And, uh, and here you can see a little bit of the uh, ramp access and accessible access to the auditorium. There is a handicapped parking space in the northwest corner. And so by virtue of that, um, our ADA accessibility expert told us we have to provide a ramp for that. So uh, the ramp that's there now is, does not meet ADA standards. Uh, we're going to be building ramp that does. And then the main entry to the building, I spoke about this a little bit earlier. Um, we're also wanting to make that accessible. 
um, what's going to happen is the from the from the auditorium, the entry itself, there'll be a 30-foot accessible ramp that comes down, and then going off to the southwest, um, the plan shows it a little bit here. Uh, there will be a sidewalk that complies with accessibility standards. Um, we're going to make it flat, so it's a less than 5% slope, 2% crowd slope. But then continuing from the main ramp, we're going to come down, and then we're going to put a series of steps um, to take you basically up into the auditorium. So um, it will be a much nicer entrance to the auditorium that we're going to be providing, and uh, we believe everybody will be happy with this new configuration. So. Uh, um, last thing on here is the marquee sign, which I spoke about earlier. It's uh, in the in the general location of the existing marquee sign. All right, with that, I'm going to move on to the next slide. Um, this shows you an enlargement of the kitchen expansion, if you will. The orange area is the current kitchen, and then you add that to the uh, the kitchen addition, the tan area there. That will be the enlarged kitchen. It almost doubles in size, and uh, anyway, it's uh, it's going to be a nice kitchen. Um, we have the district's standard kitchen consultant been working with us, and uh, I think I know the district's been happy with everything we've done in that regard. And so uh, I'm confident that the district and the school will be satisfied and happy with this new kitchen once it's completed. Um, also, just oh, to Brett? talk through. Yes, ma'am. For the parents listening, does this mean that in our cafeteria, all those big silver freezers are will not be in the cafeteria anymore? That is correct. All of that will be taken out. Okay. All of that's going to go where it's supposed to be, which is in the kitchen. Great. Um, the other thing I'll just, you know, this is another kind of major item here. This is a bullet points, but the finishes. The cafeteria is going to be refinished. Um, the hallways, all of the hallways are going to be replaced. The finishes, it's going to be new flooring, new wall finish. The lockers are going to be coming out. Uh, we're going to be tiling the walls and uh, replacing the ceilings. And then uh, in the classrooms, all the classrooms are going to be refinished, the walls, the ceilings. There's a few ceilings that are, are not that old. They are not being replaced, but that's there's not many of those. Almost all of the ceilings will be replaced. And then uh, casework is being replaced per the district standards, and the gymnasium floor is going to be updated. Uh, we're looking to replace that, and uh, anyway, that's part of what we're going to be doing. Uh, another bullet on here, grease interceptor. I'm pretty sure nobody cares about that, but the kitchen expands into where the current grease interceptor is, and so um, we have thought about that, and we're going to be replacing one that's going to be uh, workable. So that's going to be displaced. I would encourage everybody not to be around when that happens because it tends to smell. Um, but anyway, that's going to be happening. And then uh, all this says so all the EMAP systems in the kitchen are being replaced. We have another slide later on that will talk a little bit more about the EMAP systems that are being reworked. But uh, anyway, that's uh, it's on this slide. Um, here we talk a little bit about the mechanical system. This uh, the slide here is actually showing your 1995 edition. The classrooms are in red. The library is in yellow. Um, and again, that's going to be refinished. Um, but this uh, slide speaks to the MEP systems. The existing system that you have out there right now is steam. You have steam boilers uh, in your basement. Those are going to be replaced with hot water basement with hot, hot water boilers. And uh, it's going to be a new piping system, and we're going to take heat to the mechanical units. And so uh, the radiators that are currently on the perimeter will be taken out and removed. There's some piping that's been around that um, I'm sure is very hot, and I'm sure that's been an issue. Um, but anyway, all that piping will go away, and so you're not going to have that anymore. So the mechanical system... It's not 100% replaced, but I would say it's, you know, 50 or 60% of the systems are being replaced. In addition to that, the control systems are being completely replaced. Right now, you have two control systems, one for the heating, one for the cooling. And now, with the hot water steam being integrated with the other mechanical systems, you'll have one thermostat instead of two. And so, uh, 
anyway, that's we have we know that's going to be much better than what you have right now, and uh, it's going to give you much better control and better systems to control. So uh, I'm confident y'all will be happy with uh, the improvements that you're going to be uh, enjoying after this is completed. Um, continuing with mechanical systems, um, this slide is showing in, in purple is the auditorium. Um, pretty much we're uh, refinishing that. Um, nothing's being changed out, but there's new theatrical lights that are going to be added. Um, another big bullet here is all of the LED lights, all the lighting in the school is going to be replaced with LED lighting. So uh, you'll have better lighting and more efficient lighting. And uh, also, in addition to that, you'll have new lighting controls that will go with all of that, which basically will turn off systems when they're not being used. So it's an energy saving component that's actually in the code. But anyway, we're going to be doing that. Other two bullets on here are the fire alarm system is uh, being completely replaced. Um, not sure what else to say on that. The uh, security system is also being updated. Um, the card readers are being added in uh, selected locations as we review with the school. And um, there are some additional cameras that are going to be employed, and uh, the system's going to be updated in that regard. All right. Um, moving on, um, this talks a little bit more about the secure vestibule. It's kind of redundant. We've talked about that already. The other thing we're doing is we have a uh, new uh, wayfinding signage that's going to be provided. Um, we have a, uh, it's a signage group that I've used for quite a while that's really has very nice designs. And so uh, um, anyway, I'm confident you're going to be happy with that. We are, we've used the branding. We've tried to use the school colors and, and on the signage that's going to be real strong on there. So uh, anyway, y'all will be, Real happy, I think, with the new signage that we're going to be employing. Um, this slide is of the second floor. Um, again, classrooms were going to be refinished, corridors going to be refinished, administrative areas refinished, and casework. Um, so anyway, that's uh, more of the more of the refinishing that we've spoken about earlier. It's going to be happening basically throughout the school. All right, this is a perspective that we have of the main entry. Uh, there's a drop-off area and we have the, the canopy is actually cantilevered. Um, you can't see the slope on this, but um, the grade drops from right to left here. And so uh, this uh, child in the blue shirt is in a lower area. So anyway, the grade slopes, the canopy will be flat uh, across this entry at the, at the drop-off area. And then the canopy that goes from this drop-off area up to the school, uh, it is sloped with the grade. It actually slopes quite a bit. I had to point that out to our designer and he realized that. And so we've worked on some detailing of that to where to look nice. Um, but anyway, this is a uh, entry canopy. This is one area where the district told us that they wanted us to really do something nice. And so uh, we think we've provided a really nice entry and enhancement to the entrance to the school. And uh, you know, we're happy with it, and we're hopeful and thinking you'll be real happy with it as well. Um, this is another perspective looking basically right up the canopy. And again, you can see how the canopy is cantilevered. Um, the tree here, that's an existing tree. We've looked at that, and uh, we're going to be work to, A, we're protecting the trees, so there shouldn't be any damage to the trees that are there now. Um, and we are going to be trimming them up some that'll help, uh, should help their life of those trees that are there. But anyway, that's a side story. The big thing is here that the uh, entry canopy is uh, going to be a very nice entry canopy for you. Moving on to the next slide, this is a perspective uh, showing the cafeteria itself, showing the finishes. Um, the interiors group was real interested in extending the branding of the school using the school's colors and so we're going to be uh, providing those on the walls and the finishes and uh, the, the floor itself is terrazzo. Terrazzo is a wonderful floor material. Uh, there's some cracks in it. We've noted for that to be repaired but uh, where you have terrazzo we are keeping terrazzo. Um, 
other thing this is showing is basically the ceiling being replaced and new lighting as we mentioned earlier uh, high efficiency lighting and uh, should be able to have some really nice lighting and uh, this does show that there's no equipment in the cafeteria going back to principal Carter's comment um, and this is an accurate representation um, anyway you will have a main opening door that uh, in the center of the cafeteria and there'll be two lines that split to the left and to the right and uh, I think that's pretty similar to what you have right now in terms of layout so the flow will be the same but when you go through those doors you will see a brand new kitchen when this opens up Um, this shows the floor finishes. Uh, basically, it's new floor finishes in most areas. Um, where we have wood floor, where we're finishing those. And um, anyway, that the, this also shows the pattern of the VCT or LVT in the corridors. Um, we've had quite a bit of discussion with the school on this and uh, we had a pretty wild pattern at one point but um, the district thought that that would maybe uh, that wasn't going to help the attitude of the kids to have such a wild pattern so uh, we're still uh, using the school's uh, branding the colors the yellow and red um, but we're also integrating that with the other finishes that we have and this slide shows the finishes. The VCT is on the left. Um, we are doing an option to where we're going to look to do. There's VCT, which is probably what everybody used to seeing. There's also LVT, uh, which is a an enhanced version. And uh, we're hoping we can do that. The uh, pricing will help. Um, it's an alternate that we're looking at. And so uh, it's basically the same colors, but there'll be LVT. It'll be a much nicer floor. Um, and then uh, again the colors the branding of the school we've worked with the school and we've confirmed exactly what colors those are and so uh, we're working with that and uh, then this also shows the trazo on there too so anyway this is the palette for the finishes for the school for the new finishes that you'll be seeing when the school opens up in uh, year after next anyway it's the uh, fall of 2021 is when that's going to be occurring so uh, that gets to the end of the slideshow. So uh, I guess I'll turn it back to Principal Carter, and uh, I guess we're here to answer questions. Thank you, Britt. I think this is very exciting. I know parents will appreciate having the the entryway and the secure vestibule where you know exactly, because now you come in and you're not exactly sure which way to turn. So I know that's gonna be a really big upgrade for us and the extra space in the cafeteria will be wonderful. Um, Trustee Mackey, would you like to say a few words? Yep, so hello again. I'm sorry if you missed my comments before. My name is Ben Mackey. I am the school board trustee for District 7, which has the privilege of serving the great L.O. Donald School and Community. Uh, and so I am excited to be here. My role as a trustee is to work with you all, um, work with parents, community members, with administration and Principal Carter to make sure that all the questions get answered and we really make sure that this renovation gives the students at L. O'Donnell everything they expect, which is the best possible renovation. So I am excited to work with you. Um, just a reminder, you can submit questions by going to dallasisd.org slash bond 2015 questions. Or if you're watching it on Facebook, you can just type it in the comments right there. Uh, and then also, I'm going to make sure that Principal Carter has my cell phone number and email address that we can give out to everyone here. And if you've got questions or things come up, uh, you can reach out to me directly and I'd be happy to work with you on that. So again, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, Principal Carter. Thank you, Trustee Mackey. And I see we have a couple of questions. Our first is, what is the construction timeline? Um, the construction, they're gonna start it as soon as we can get a permit, it'll be in the fall. And then the timeline, it's expected to be finished the fall of 2021. So basically it's gonna be about a year of construction. Um, the, the construction will be occurring during basically when the students aren't in here. The other question is, will students be displaced during construction? Um, to my knowledge, they're not gonna be. My understanding is that the 
construction will be occurring when school is not in session. And uh, at nighttime, they'll be doing that. Um, the contractors typically take advantage of every day they can uh, when the school is available. And so that's that would be my understanding. Uh, Jeff, would you want to join in and kind of confirm those thoughts? Yes, that's correct. And just to go through a few of the other uh, common questions that come up regarding the schedule, it will start winter, winter, spring because of the permitting and then run through a, approximately a nine month cycle. They will never be working in an area that uh, has students. They will only be working off hours in evenings, weekends and uh, holidays. Uh, any area that does have activity will be partitioned off from the students because the safety of the student and staff is paramount. And so those protocols will be in place, not just for from the district side, but also the general contractor will also have those protocols that will be reviewed daily by our staff. And they'll be in direct contact with the principal also daily to know the activities so that there's no disturbance to the school uh, as an example, star testing, there won't be any noisy activity that will occur during those time periods. So uh, just to kind of reiterate that safety and security is, is critical. There'll never be a disruption for that. Uh, the construction timeline will work around that. We're going through a phasing plan so that we can actually go through, the, through those issues and make sure we understand this, the scenarios for the contractor and where they can work and, and how long it's actually going to take them. Um, there's also an additional question that's come in regarding safety, and that's the precaution of the construction workers and campus staff and students regarding COVID-19. And the same safety parties will be working. There's a district um, safety uh, manager, and there's also a construction safety manager and they share notes. One shares more notes in relationship with the staff, the operations, and the other with construction. But there is an overlap on these projects. And obviously over the last, well, since mid-March, uh, the precautions and the standards and safety uh, measures have varied. And so we'll continue to track those and monitor those as they develop. And our programs will daily and weekly and monthly uh, parallel those requirements. So they will be evolving, but we are tracking those to make sure that not just the, the learners or the students are protected, but the staff as well as the contractors and visitors. Uh, next question was talking about the uh, kitchen, which is something I was gonna to touch on as well. The, uh, obviously the kitchen is not gonna be in operation when it's being doubled in size and replaced. My understanding is that y'all are going to be catering in meals, but um, I don't know if there's, uh, I'm not sure who else can speak to exactly how that's going to be working. The cafeteria itself um, should be able to be kept in use, um, just the kitchen will not be. Well, let, let me come back to that. That kind of dovetails with the phasing of the construction. We've been in review with the, uh, on the project with the food service program, the the child nutrition program. And so they're aware of how we're disturbing this particular facility and we're working through those logistics, but we've been through this many times in other, uh, other schools. So the meals will arrive, whether they're from a remote location or on site, um, but we're working through those logistics now, but it has, it, we have, we are considering that. Thank you so much for addressing that. I was wondering too. There's another question that arrived regarding the safety and that is, will the students be displaced during construction? And the answer is no. They, uh, because of the construction activities will occur during off hours, that will, uh, are presently they will not have to be moved. If there is a situation, a temporary situation, where we have to relocate them into, uh, for hours or, or a day or whatever it may be, We'll evaluate that and handle that as it as an issue arises, but we will never place the students or learners or staff or contractors in a, a place of that's unsafe during construction activity. 
Thank you. Britt, can you tell us a little bit more about the playground and how that's being updated? Um, it's basically being completely resurfaced. And so uh, what we're intending to do is to take out what's there and put back in what's there, um, but just with a new surface. So, uh, and in terms of scheduling, um, I believe that would be done during the summer. Um, I wouldn't. I know you need to use that playground in its current condition uh, during school time, and so if the school's in session, I think you need to have that playground. Um, so that would be my expectation: is that the playground is going to be replaced during the summer. Um, that doesn't have that long a timeline, and so the summer timeline is they should be able to do that during the summer. Okay. And the next question is details about the auditorium renovations. Um, it's just, it's refinishing the auditorium is what we're doing. The, uh, the upgrade in terms of renovations is really the lighting. The theatrical lighting is gonna be completely replaced um, and the lighting controls associated with those. The lights in the auditorium are gonna be replaced. The windows are being replaced and then the uh, be putting new window covering on those uh, windows as well. Getting a request to use the slide, so yes, going back to the auditorium. Essentially, we're highlighting that color. I mean, this is a plan view, and so uh, I'm afraid that doesn't tell you anything more than what I just said in terms of the uh, uh, the scope of the work in the auditorium. One other thing I will say is that the carpet, all of the carpet that's in the building uh, is being replaced. This is a general statement. All the carpet's being replaced with VCT. There's two exceptions to that. One is the library, where carpet is a good thing, and the other is the auditorium. Um, we're identifying that as an alternate to replace that. Um, but anyway, that's uh, that carpet needs to be replaced as well. So anyway, that is in the work scope, and uh, provided we have money for that, um, we're hoping that'll be replaced as well. Me too. Our librarian will be very excited. Okay, I'm seeing, uh, so since we had audio issues, please repeat the presentation. Is that, uh, you want me to go back through that? Okay. Um, do you want me to do a full talk through everything? Or uh, is that... Is that what the request is? I see a yes, okay. Um, so this is a description, this is a site plan that shows the scope of the work. The primary addition that we're doing is the kitchen expansion. We're doubling it in size and uh, the cafeteria is gonna be refinished. The, um, and then the main entrance, we are gonna be providing a secure vestibule there in addition to a new entrance canopy and a drop off canopy. The site renovations, uh, we're going to provide a new access to the auditorium, uh, provide access in two directions, accessible access in two directions, and then we'll be providing a new entrance really to the auditorium. Right now it's out there, it's really a pretty steep grade and it's not a comfortable entrance to the auditorium. Um, we feel confident you're going to be real happy with what we're going to be providing out there uh, in its place. Then uh, in terms of uh, the parking lot and up paving and then the uh, playground is being replaced. We talked about that just a minute ago. Building exterior, the primary thing that's happening on this building is the roofing is being replaced. 
Um, the original building was a flat roof. Um, there was a theory in one point in time architecturally that water would just make its way off to the drains or off the edge of the building. Um, that was not a very good theory. And uh, as long as I've been practicing architecture, which has been 40 years, um, we've been doing sloped roofs. And so uh, your building is going to get a sloped roof. The drains are there. We're going to replace those drains, but the existing roof planes will be sloped to those roofs. And uh, currently, there's uh, the overflow condition is pretty limited. Um, basically, the water will build up and go off the edge is the overflow condition now. Um, code requires, and we're going to be providing overflow drains. And so uh, there will be some piping that's going to be exposed in some of these classrooms. And you'll just have to be happy with the fact that you have a brand new roof that doesn't leak. And uh, you'll be proud of that. And uh, you won't mind having seen that drain running through the room, <laughs> just a few rooms. There's probably about half a dozen rooms where that's going to occur. But uh, anyway, we'll be we're very excited to have a roof that doesn't leak. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I, and I am too. We've been out there and we've been leaking and um, it really pained us to see that. Uh, brickwork repair, there's not a significant amount of brickwork repair. Uh, this is a 79-year-old building. Um, and uh, I think, no, so 71 years. Um, it's remarkable the brick is in the condition that it's in. But we do have some replacement that's going to be noted. There's a few cracks. And uh, we've been working with the Brick Institute, kind of confirming the process and what should we should be doing for that, uh, given this construction type. And we're going to be doing that. There's some bricks that have popped off the face, and so we're going to note that being replaced as well. Um, and then window replacement. There's uh, there are some really old windows. Uh, primarily, the auditorium windows will be replaced. And then there's a few other windows around the building that are really old. Many have been replaced, but we're going to be replacing all the ones that are very old. Um, and then the ground level window screen, um, the district has standards for that. There are some screens that are there now. Those will be replaced, and the ones that are missing screens will get them on the first floor. Britt, I see we get a new marquee sign. Is that going to be one of those great electronic ones? Uh, that will be an electronic sign. That's correct. <laughs> It's a masonry base. The district standard is the masonry base, and then it's a digital uh, display at the top. So uh, we have a data line that goes out there so you can run it from one of your computers inside the school. That'll be great. All right. Um, then, uh, again, the, uh, well, some of you might not have heard this, but anyway, this is showing the new entrance canopy and also the secure vestibule. And then this shows you the Marie Key sign is on the left side here. Um, it's basically the location where the current sign is. I think that's a good location. And then uh, again, this little site plan is showing the main entrance, is showing the new entries, new accessible entrances uh, to the auditorium. So for parents who are watching, the new security vestibule, vestibule will be where you normally come in, and then it will have an entrance to Ms. Sanchez's office. So when you come in the building, there will immediately be someone who can greet you and identify that you should be in our building and have a reason to be there, and then to direct you. So you won't come in anymore and wonder which way to go to the main office. I think it'll be a great um, change and upgrade to our building. All right, and the next slide is basically the, the bullets here are the refinishing. We're, you're refinishing pretty much the school. Uh, floors, walls, ceilings, all being upgraded or replaced or refinished. Um, and that includes almost all the rooms in the building. Uh, and then the other boring thing here, the grease interceptor is being replaced because the kitchen has expanded into where the current grease interceptor is located. Um, and then MEP systems in the, complete, in the kitchen are being completely replaced. Uh, mechanical systems, the current steam hitting system and radiators are being taken out completely. Uh, new hot water boilers are being replaced, replacing that in the basement. And then that hot water is going to the HVAC systems, uh, the rooftop units, and then that'll be distributed throughout the school. 
So the the other big thing is that the thermostats are being completely replaced. Currently, you have hot water thermostats, or heating thermostats, and cooling thermostats. You're going to have one thermostat, and uh, so you will uh, anyway, and it'll be completely replaced. So uh, that should give you much better control, and uh, you'll be able to condition the school much better. Uh, MEP systems is continuing on. The theatrical lights are being replaced and the lighting controls. The fire alarm system is being replaced and the security system is being upgraded. Um, cameras are being added. Card readers are being added. Uh, the lighting system is being completely replaced. Uh, all the lights will be replaced with LED lights and new lighting controls. That's a code requirement, but also it's really beneficial that it helps save energy. Um, security, we've spoken about this a minute ago, the secured vestibule and uh, new wayfinding. So there'll be new signage throughout the building. It's going to be in line with the school's branding. It's primarily red and has a lot of yellow accents, and uh, we think it's a very attractive sign. Uh, finishes on the second floor will continue what's happening on the first floor. Everything's basically going to be refinished. And uh, this is a perspective basically showing the entrance canopy, the, uh, the drop-off canopy that's adjacent to the drop-off drive is level. Um, the, the, the sidewalk there slopes, and so that'll slope, but the canopy will be level. And then the canopy from the drop-off canopy to the building will slope with the grade, uh, current grade. And this is another perspective basically showing the lighting that's going to be in there, and there will be a soffit to these uh, to the entry canopy. Uh, this is a interior perspective showing the cafeteria. The existing ceiling is going to be replaced with the new lighting, and the wall finishes will be refinished with the school's colors. And the existing terrazzo floor is going to be retained. Um, and Anyway, it will be uh, repaired in a few locations where it needs to be repaired, but the big picture is that uh, the terrazzo is going to be there and it's going to be remain. And this shows the floor finishes for the first floor. Um, the hallway, we're going to have a lot of the school colors. There's the yellow and red, and, uh, and then we also have a more neutral palette with the uh, more grays and, and uh, tan tones, and then the other colors as well. So we believe it's a very handsome floor pattern. We've been working with the district to resolve this to where they're happy with it. And uh, they're happy with it. We're happy with it. We will hope you will be happy with it. And uh, this is just the palette of the finishes themselves. Um, LVT is being replaced. Is, the colors are VCT. These colors are shown in VCT, which is in the base uh, project, but we also have an alternate to try to upgrade that to LVT. That's new for the district. Um, they have not done that in the past, but they're looking to do that on this school, and we are obviously supportive of it. It's a little bit nicer tile than VCT. So I think that's uh, run-through number two. So uh, after we've gone through that, do we have more questions? So I'm seeing uh, Jacqueline's tell us we're getting a lot of thumbs up. And, we uh, so are. That's, that's great. Thank you, Britt. We are so excited about the changes that are going to happen at Donald. We're a great little school, and now we're going to look like a great little school. <laughs> yeah, we've been really happy doing this, and uh, I've been very impressed meeting with you and the staff that I've met with, and the school itself is uh, very impressive. And uh, um, we're happy to be able to help get all of these changes and upgrades to your school so that you'll have an even better school. Thank you. And so for parents and uh, community members who are, are listening or participating on Facebook, you can message me by my email, kacarter at dallasisd.org, or you can message us on Facebook. And we'll keep answering your questions anytime you have them. Oh, 
I'm getting a message that we've made a video of the presentation and we'll be posting it on our Facebook site tomorrow for anyone who would like to watch it and then ask any further questions. And, I, and it will also be on our website. And I think that is about it. We're going to close down for the evening. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Britt. Thank you, Trustee Mackey. Thank you both as well.